Thank you. This is Megan Weasel coming at you from the Great Indiana Wilderness, and uh, I want to talk to you today about something that nobody wants to talk about. You know, if you're a guy, because we're all studly and we like build stuff and dig stuff and shoot stuff. If you really want to achieve any kind of self-sufficient lifestyle, the first thing that you need to learn how to do is shop. You know, and uh, it's something that I can't do. I mean, I'm one of these people that. I, I'll walk into a convenience store and buy everything, you know, like two-week-old bread and crap, you know, and I, I mean, and I'll spend, you know, $40 and, like, come home with maybe enough to make a sandwich. I can't do that. Uh, so if you are like me, you know, what you need to do is get a pro to go with you, all right? This is, uh, you know, it's kind of joking around here but the truth is okay is I couldn't do any of the stuff that I do by myself um, you know my chances of, of achieving any sort of self-sufficiency out here would be absolutely laughable trying to hold down a freaking job if I didn't have any help uh, and you know it's someplace along the line we decided that that homemaker uh, got equated with a servant right? and uh, I can't tell you how fucking funny that is uh, because, you know, I got a homemaker. Uh, I got, you know, Josephine, who runs the house and handles the home economics and the shopping and, you know, feeds the critters and does the nursing and does all the, you know, stuff that needs to be done here around the house in addition to feeding me and my dad and, you know, and all the rest of that. And this is not because she's standing there holding the camera, okay? This is because, you know, it happens to be the truth is that, you know, for a long time, I was like everybody else, man. I was going through the, you know, the drive through at McDonald's and getting dinner and going through the drive through on the way home and getting breakfast and, and you know, well, there was 20 bucks shot and, uh, you know, which is now meat for the week, okay? Uh, because it never occurred to me to actually, like, cook something, you know? Uh, now everybody at work, you know, wants to see what I've got for dinner before they send out for pizza, you know, and they all hate me. And hope she made cookies. I mean, that's, you know, um, people have this vision in their mind somehow of the, you know, the self sufficient guy is like the mountain man, you know, riding alone on the skyline with his rifle over his shoulder. I, most of those guys, okay, if you check it out, there was a horse right behind him, all right, you know. And the lady on it was the one that was actually taking care of business while he was out, you know, wading around and either catching or not catching the beaver. And around here we call it killing the mammoth, you know. Every week I go out and kill the mammoth and then I drag his ass into the front yard, you know. Cooking, cleaning and everything else, that's Josephine's deal. And uh, she does it better than anybody, you know. All I have to do is go out and get the paycheck, you know and basically uh, keep my ears open and receive some guidance occasionally, and voila, I have money, you know, which is amazing. I mean, I used to, like, leave the house with 50 bucks, and I'd get to work, you know, with, like, nothing and, and some microwave dinners, and, you know, where did it all go? Well, I don't know. I was, you know, now I know where everything went. All right, and I get twenty dollars at the beginning of the week, and usually on Friday I hand back ten of it. Okay, and you know there are questions about where the other ten went, but you know the good thing is, is man, you know you've got you got to have help, you've got to have family, you've got to have community, you've got to have people around you that you know because nobody can do everything good. It's just that simple. Nobody can do everything good. You have to have people who you know their strengths are your weaknesses. Because the thing that nobody wants to talk about is being committed to a self-sufficient lifestyle. Being committed to anything has nothing to do with the things that you do well. It has to do with somehow managing to do the things that you suck at. You know, and everybody wants to talk about the stuff that they like to do. You know, we like to go out and shoot the guns, and we like to go out and do the chainsaw, and we like to do this, that, Managing a house, I was completely freaking hopeless, okay? And, and the fact is, you know, a lot of my money went I don't know where. And, uh, you know, the first thing when, when we got married, the first thing that happened was all of a sudden I had a wood stove. Why? 
Well, you know, because I married an old school Canadian. I told her what I was what I was paying for propane. Holy crap! You know, <laughs> I thought we were overthrowing the government right then. I mean, there was you know there was almost a revolution right here. Told her what I was paying for cigarettes. You know, oh no, that's when the cigarette machine showed up. You know, and all of a sudden, a three hundred dollar a month bill fell to under a hundred bucks. All of a sudden, you know, stuff that I was paying nine hundred dollars just to get through the winter fell to absolutely nothing. You know, I had to get gas for a chainsaw. You know, and I mean, yeah, I had to go out and cut the wood. But now I have somebody to put the frozen peas on my old paratrooper knees, right? You know, and it's like, yeah, it's okay. I mean, I'm in better shape than, you know, half the teenagers at work. So the deal is, is, you know, all I'm saying here is, you know, shopping, home economics, stuff like that. I had to have help, you know. I'm not saying get married. I'm saying, you know, you need to be prepared to team up with other people that, you know, are in their own way, you know, can complement your strengths with their strengths. Uh, and that's the way it worked. I mean, I, you know, I talked to my dad, he was 92, and uh, nobody out here did it alone. You know, they all made it through the, de the depression and everybody ate. And he always said, you know, they never heard of a child going to bed hungry around here. And they didn't. You know, they all made it through, but they made it through because of other people, because they were a community and because it was a community of families. So, you know, I mean, the whole lone wolf running around out in the woods with, you know, ammo bands all over your, you know, yeah, okay, uh, maybe some people want to do that, you know, but when it comes to self-sufficiency, as far as I'm concerned, you know, the first thing you need to get is a shovel, okay, and the second thing you need to get is somebody to cook you breakfast so you have the strength to actually use the shovel. Don't worry, YouTube. Indiana's holding.